Hello my friends, I miss you too much. Okay, today we will speak about storytelling and five senses. How to write a story and use my five senses. Open with me page 79. In this page we have five senses. Sight, smell, taste, touch, hear. Okay, in this page, search for objects in the classroom that you can see. Smell, taste, touch, and hear. Draw and label what you find. Now, we are not in the classroom, but we are at home. So, what can you find around you? Number one, the sight. What can you see around you? Yes, excellent. You can see a fan, you can see a chair, bed, uh, living room, TV, whatever you see. Okay, second, number two, what can you smell around you? And then we will complete the other senses. Number two, what can I smell around me? Number three, what can I taste around me? I can taste like a cake uh, or um, chicken or whatever I have. Okay, what can you touch around you? Then what can you hear around you? Okay, my friends, now we should listen to this video to learn some things about the five senses and about storytelling, and we call it also sensory organs. Sensory organs, which we use it in the five senses. Raj? Why aren't you playing with Rhea and your other friends? You can learn so much from this game. From that game? <laughs> Come here, Raj. Sit down. And I will explain it to you. They have tied Rhea's eyes, right? Yes, Papa. So that she can't see them. Our eyes help us to see. Our eyes are a part of our body. It is a sensory organ. We have five sensory organs. They are our eyes, ears, nose, tongue and skin. Organs that give us information about things in our surroundings are called sensory organs. If Rhea can't see her friends, how is she supposed to catch them? Papa, it's simple. She can hear their shouts, the noises they make and they also keep touching her. All this helps her to find them and catch them. Exactly. Often, we use two or more sensory organs for the same purpose. Even though Rhea cannot see her friends, she uses her ears to hear them and she can feel when they touch her. In this way, her ears and skin help her to find them. Papa, I agree with you. They are having fun together. Now what are they playing? Tailing the donkey. They have tied Arun's eyes. And he has to put a tail on the donkey. And as he can't see the board, he has put the tail anywhere but in the place it should be. Just like all the other kids have done. Without our eyes, we will not be able to see. That is why 
the eye is an important sensory organ. Yes, Papa. Our eyes help us to read too. What are all the other things that our eyes help us to do? We can see different colors and other beautiful things in nature. They help us tell the difference between day and night. Come children, I have another game for you. Here are three boxes. I have placed a small stone in one, a marble in the other, and a coin in the third. Now, rattle each box. Is the sound from each box the same? Which part of your body helped you to hear the different sounds? The sounds were different. We hear different sounds because of our ears. Can you hear the sounds of the birds? Can you identify which bird it is? A bulbul, a crow, a cuckoo, a sparrow. Very good, Raj. You are able to recognize the special calls, that is, the sounds birds make without seeing them because of your ears. Raj, what are the other sounds that we hear? We hear different sounds like people's voices, twittering of birds, songs, honking of vehicles, etc. with our ears. Some sounds are sweet to our ears. Some are harsh. Yes, Papa. Very loud sounds and noise are harmful to our ears. That is why we must not use crackers that make a loud noise because a loud noise can damage a part of our ear called the eardrum. and cause deafness papa what do we do if we cannot hear we would be in great trouble if we could not hear if we cannot hear very well we can use a hearing aid papa why does a child who cannot hear not learn to speak either we speak only after we have heard others speaking so when a child has never heard anything ever since birth he or she is not able to speak now children let's blindfold ria again We will put some flowers into her hand. Ria, what flowers are these? Papa, these are mogra flowers. You are right, Ria. How did you know? I smelt them, Papa. We smell with our nose. With our nose, we recognize the source of many special smells easily. What's that I smell? Has mother lit up something? Yes, an incense stick for prayers. And has she prepared something for all you tired children to eat? I can smell that too. Yes, bhel papa. 
It's on the table. Our nose helps us to recognize the smell of incense sticks, flowers, fruits, even bale. And the smell of the soil after the first summer shower. Look at Moti. Mm, I think he has smelled the bell too. Children, do you know which animal helps the police track down thieves? A dog. You are really smart, Raj. Police dogs have a very sharp sense of smell. The dog is first made to smell some possessions of the thief and then follows the path of the smell to the thief's den. In this way, they help the police track down the thief. Did you enjoy the bail? Yes, thank you, Papa. It was mm, delicious. How did you know it was delicious? Oh, Papa, we tasted it. Yes. Our tongue tells us the taste of things. It tells us whether something is sour, salty, bitter or sweet. The bhel was yummy, but a bit spicy. Papa, is hot a taste? Rhea, hot is not a taste. When we eat something that has a lot of chilies, our tongue feels a hot burning sensation. Rhea, have this sherbet. It will make you feel better. Papa, will you get the taste of sherbet if you only dip your finger in it? Rhea, it is the tongue which tells us different tastes. Hence, dipping a finger in a sherbet will not tell us its taste. Children, do you like the sherbet or would you like to join me with some hot coffee? Papa, we prefer sherbet, but tell us why are you holding the kettle with the cloth? It's hot, Raj. Don't you know that the outer covering of our body is called the skin? The skin tells us about things that come in contact with it. If we touch a hot vessel, we feel its heat on our skin and it burns our skin. Raj, what would happen if you held this cube of ice for a long time? If we hold ice for a long time, our hand hurts. What happens when mother pricks her finger with a needle? It hurts. Touch this stone. How does it feel? Rough to touch. And this cotton? Cotton is soft to touch. So you see, our skin is also a sensory organ. It tells us whether something is cold or hot. Rough or smooth, sharp or blunt, etc. But if I touch this hot kettle with my nails, it does not feel warm. Our skin, not our nails, tells us about things that touch it. Hence, touching something with the nails will not tell us if it is cool or warm. Do you know a special script called Braille? 
has been made to help blind people to read. A blind person can feel the script with his or her hands to read it. Can you match the five senses with the sensory organs in the visual and fill in the blanks? Eyes See Ear Ear Nose Smell Tongue Taste Skin Touch Can you say who I am? I can see the red or green light at the crossroads. Ice. I can tell that the mango is sour. Tongue. I can tell someone has brought sweet smelling flowers. Nose. I can tell that a nice song is playing on the radio. Ears. I can feel that the iron is hot. Skin. Which sensory organ tells you that the rain has made the garden green? Ice. The cucumber salad is bitter. Tongue. A thorn has pricked you. Skin. The bell is too sour. Tongue. Trees are swaying in the wind. Ice. The spray has a good smell. Nose. A cuckoo is cooing. Ears. The raw mango is green. Eyes. There is a rainbow in the sky. Eyes. The clothes are wet. Skin. There is too much salt in the food. Tongue. Okay, grade one. We finished all the things about five senses and we should know some things about storytelling, how to tell a story, how to write a story. Let's learn. How to write a story For young writers Stories need a few things Hi guys, do you remember what a story is? A story tells us something that happened Well, a story needs to have a few things so that it can tell us what happened We are going to look at what these things are We will start at the beginning Here is the beginning of our friend Caterpillar After the beginning comes the middle and after the middle comes the end, and the end of him too. Caterpillar is just like a story that you will write. He starts at the beginning, has a middle, and ends with, well, an end. It is important to have all these parts, because look here, if we have just a middle and an end, we wouldn't have a whole story, or a whole caterpillar. What would our friend do then? Stories also need to have a setting, that is, where is it? Where is my story? Here it looks like it's outside on a sunny day. And a story needs characters. Who is in it? Who are my characters? Today we have Stan and Sandy. And these characters need to do something. Something needs to happen in my story. Stan asks Sandy if she would like to see the clouds. I can see them from here, she said. Stan smiled, grabbed her by the hand and launched into the air. 
This is what I meant, he said. Sandy screamed her head off as she looked down from the clouds. So, young writers, let's look at what you know about stories. You know they need a beginning, a middle, and an end. You know they need a setting and characters, and that something needs to happen. Well, that was my story. Now, it's your turn. <laughs>